Alright, so my name is Steven Dotzer and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about statistical mechanics today. Um, hopefully you've been covering that in class so far and have a good handle on it. Um, but I know it's kind of tricky and so we'll work through uh, one problem that I kind of came up with here uh, and try to give you a little extra practice. Um, so, I mean, we've probably gone through um, a protein problem trying to figure out um, the statistical probability for proteins as they enter different configurations. Or if not, uh, that might be one of your exam questions, so um, hint, hint there. Um, but my problem, uh, I decided that it should be about a necklace and try and fill uh, three different spots with different gemstones. Um, so like we know in statistical, mecha statistical mechanics, um, there's a balance between energy and entropy. Um, so in this one, we're gonna do kind of a balance between cost and having an expansive collection of jewelry. So, Ladies, I think, know more about that than we do, but uh, this is what I came up with. Um, so to kind of outline the problem, um, we're going to do um, you know, kind of a, a whole collection of different things to kind of really cover the whole basis of statistical mechanics. Uh, so we'll just kind of get started and we'll uh, work through as much as we can. Um, so the basis for my problem is I developed a necklace and we're going to say it's going to have three gemstones in it um, and each spot will be filled. So three gemstones in the necklace. And uh, our choices for gems, we're going to have diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and sapphires. Um, so I just looked up some prices online, uh, found a website called israeldiamonds.com, and they had some uh, average prices on there. Uh, so I kind of just rounded them off a little bit for ease of use in the problem. Um, and that's what we're going to go with for prices. Um, so kind of the first way we're going to start out with the problem is we're going to uh, fill out the different spots of the, uh, and get all the different combinations gems that we can have. Um, so to do that, we're going to start by uh, writing down all of our different combinations. Um, we'll start with the cheapest ones and go up to more expensive. Um, so if we're going to fill all three spots, obviously our first combination is just going to be three sapphires. So nothing too special, three sapphires. And we can calculate a total cost of that for $500 each. And the cost of that one will be $1,500. So we'll put our cost up here. And one, two, three. All right, so then the next combination, sapphire, sapphire, ruby, and so forth down the line, sapphire, sapphire, emerald, sapphire, sapphire, diamond. And you can calculate a cost for all these just by plugging in the numbers. So 500, 1,000, 2,000 for SSR. 500, 1,000, 2,500 for an emerald, and then 500, 1,000, and 5,000 if we had the price of the diamond. So obviously we can get our total number of com combinations for this. Um, we have three gem slots, and we have four, four choices that can fit in each one. So a total of 64 combinations. Uh, so to kind of save the time of writing out all the combinations, uh, I've already done that. We have them all listed out in the corner here. Um, so, I mean, it's going to take a while, but uh, when you eventually get through it, there's a nice pattern. Uh, and you just kind of write them off down the line. Uh, now, in the case of the protein problem, uh, we know from biochemistry, proteins have an N terminus and a C terminus. Um, so the order actually matters. Um, but for a necklace, you know, if it's sapphire, sapphire, ruby, you could just flip it over and it'd be ruby, sapphire, sapphire. Um, so we're going to eliminate the ones that are just flipped over from each other because we're going to consider them as the same. Um, so I have all of them written out here with all of their prices. Um, and I also have lines through the ones that are crossed out. Uh, like I said, ruby, sapphire, sapphire, sapphire would be the same as sapphire, sapphire, ruby here. So after getting rid of all of the duplicates, um, we actually end up with uh, 40 different combinations that would give us unique necklaces. Uh, so uh, 40 different combinations of necklaces, uh, each being unique. So uh, we'll move over here. So we talked about the number of microstates. And the number of microstates is the number of unique uh, kind of choices, combinations that you can make out of the necklaces. Um, so like I said, we have 
40 different microstates for this. Um, and then as far as configurations go, we'll, we'll call configurations um, based on their cost. So if they have a different cost, that would be a different configuration. Um, so right here I have all the different possible costs uh, listed out um, as far as low as 1500 for three sapphires, um, all the way on down through all the different combinations to three diamonds, um, 4,000 times three is 12,000. So that would be our most expensive necklace. Um, and then another important fact for the statistical mechanics and just determining probability, which we'll get to next, is the degeneracy. And degeneracy is simply how many times a certain energy level, or in, in our case, um, cost, will occur. So there's only one combination that will give us 1,500. And then if we you know, look back to our uh, total amount of configurations and microstates, um, we can count them. It takes a little bit, but you know, one with 2,000, two with 2,000, so um, you, know, you can just trust me that none of the others have 2,000 as their energy cost. Um, so our degeneracy for 2,000 is 2. Um, it's just kind of the same for 2,500. 1, 2, 3, and I believe there's a fourth one over here. So that's how I was getting the different configurations was um, total number of costs and then the degeneracy for each kind of configuration is just how many times each price actually occurs. So once we have that, we've got our uh, microstates, we've got our configurations, um, we've got our degeneracy for each configuration. Uh, so that's actually going to allow us to go into learning about the probabilities for each of the different states. So when we talk about probability, we talk about the Boltzmann distribution. Well, for a Boltzmann distribution, um, we know the probability of a certain state i. Um, in this case, it's going to be one of our configurations, so a cost there equal to the degeneracy of that state times e to the negative energy over kt. And then all of that, so the, the probability of being in one state divided by the probability of being in all of the states. So we have the sum of the degeneracy of all the states energy of all the states and the kt. Okay, so that's our general probability formula and we're going to use that to uh, figure out um, the probabilities for each of the different configurations. Well, I mean, we kind of run into a problem. Um, for our you know, wave functions and chem chemistry stuff, um, energy works fine, temperature works just fine, but uh, it's not quite going to work for us here. Um, we, have, we have cost and we have number of necklaces in the same configuration. Um, so degeneracy is going to be okay. We already found that out. Um, but we have to have kind of a different form of energy. Um, in this case, our energy is going to be cost. Well, and then energy is usually in units of joules and kT is in units of joules. Um, so the units have to be the same. So we actually have to find some kind of kT that also has cost. Well, um, for a cost, we can use our KT as, uh, let's say, the amount of money you make in a, a year, or in this case, um, we'll use a week because the numbers actually work out a little bit better when you do that. Um, so for annual salary, um, it comes out to be, you know, according to Social Security for this year, it was about $45,000. Uh, but if we're going to do weekly, we'll just say the annual salary is $52,000 a year so that it comes out to be a nice weekly salary of just $1,000. That'll make our numbers a little bit nicer and it'll make the problem a little bit easier to do as well. So we have our wave function up here. Um, it's saying kind of the whole balance between um, entropy and energy. In this case, it's a balance between how much money you have available and the, the cost of the uh, necklace itself. So we have, obviously, our energy level, we want low cost because I mean, no one has all the money in the world. So if we had it all low cost, we'd all end up with sapphire, sapphire, sapphire necklaces. And uh, our entropy would be zero because we only have one configuration. So trying to find that balance, we're going to try to find the configurations 
maybe going up into higher energy, in this case, higher costs. Good old Concordia clocks are good for me. Alright, so anyway, we've got our cost, and we've got, we're going to try to expand our, our jewelry collection by, you know, maybe spending a little bit more money, but being able to have a variety of necklaces. So in this case, uh, more entropy. So, uh, we, have, we do have our weight function though, the e to the negative cost over cost. So, um, for moving up into the higher cost, you are going to be penalized for that, um, kind of by the um, Gaussian curve there. So, we do have our weight function. It's a little bit different from the chemistry we've been doing so far, uh, but it is going to work out for our purposes. So, let's actually calculate one of our probabilities. Um, we'll do the probability of our, our first state, our sapphire, sapphire, sapphire necklace. So just our first configuration, $1,500 configuration. We remember that our degeneracy, uh, looking over here, our degeneracy was 1 for the first configuration. Um, and then we have times E, our cost, 1500 over 1000 and that's again our weekly salary. So there's our probability of being in the first state and we have to divide that by the sum of all the probabilities. So I mean it would take quite a while to put in all of these here. I mean we'd have to add in, you know, it'd be degeneracy of the first state plus the second state, so the degeneracy of 2 times e to the negative 2,000 was our cost over 1,000. And we'd have to add in all of our next uh, all of our next configurations to get the actual probability. Um, so we'll kind of leave that there for a little bit. Um, I did put it all into an Excel spreadsheet to get the actual numbers at the end. Um, and it'll all, it'll all kind of make sense at the end. Um, the Excel spreadsheet really helps when you have quite a lot of uh, calculations to do at the same time. Mathematica helps too. Um, so, but you could just calculate it um, by hand, punching in all the numbers into the calculator and getting it that way as well. So, if you wanted to do sapphire, 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 it should be that way. Um, if we do our second state, so the $2,000 state um, instead of the 1500 configuration, uh, we would have a degeneracy of 2 e to the negative 2000 over 1000. And then again, the bottom wouldn't change, the, the bottom is still the total. Um, so next we can move on to the probability ratio. Um, that was something we kind of talked about as being useful. If we, if we don't actually have um, kind of all of the the total states, we can find a ratio of being in one state versus the other state, um, and that's kind of helpful. Uh, for something that's limited in number of configurations, like uh, our necklace example, you can find exact probabilities. Um, you know, but a lot of the problems you get in uh, class with you know an infinite number of energy levels, you can't exactly add up all the different states on your calculator. Um, so it's more helpful to do a ratio. So for our ratio, we can do, uh, we always want to compare, or I mean, you can compare between anything, but it's usually helpful to compare to the ground state. So let's try to find probability of being in the second state, the $2,000 state, versus the first state. So again, it's just going to be the ratio of the two probabilities. So 2 times e to the negative 2,000 over 1,000 and then divided by our denominator. And then, so that's our probability of $2,000 state, and then our $1,000 state, or $1,500 state, sorry. We'll look kind of the same, just with the degeneracy of one and the cost of $1,500. So in this case, the denominators will cancel out, and our probability simplifies nicely. And so 
you can see why that would be something that's much easier to punch into your calculator um, and get an actual number for, rather than actually having to calculate all of the different microstates. Um, so we can actually do that here quick, e to the negative 2,000, and then divide it by e to the negative 1,500 over 1,000. So, so um, this is where it would be in our Excel spreadsheet. Um, I have all of our I have all of our different probabilities calculated out, um, and all of the ratios of probabilities. You can see there are 1.21, um, and I'll actually have the um, Excel spreadsheets posted in the comments of the video here, so you can check those out um, and see what you know they actually are the functions, typing them in there and stuff, how it work. Uh, so one kind of interesting thing about this, I know we mentioned in class that the uh, probability of being in a higher energy state should never be more than the state below it. Um, and the reason that we actually have more in the second state, I mean, ratio of 1.21, so for every one necklace in the lowest cost state, we have 1.21 in the second state. Uh, so the reason we actually have that is because of the degeneracy. So there's double the chance just statistically, even though it's a higher energy cost. Uh, so when he had said that in class that it's uh, never possible for, for there to be more in the second state than the first state, that's if the degeneracy is one for both state or the same for both state. So I mean, if you have one of the very lowest state and then you have 10,000 different microstates of the second energy level that are all um, equal in energy level, it's probably more likely that it will be in one of those 10,000 states than in the lowest ground state. Uh, you obviously have to do the math to actually figure that out. Um, so again, the probability ratio is nice because the denominators both cancel out, um, and you could do this for any two different you know, configurations, uh, it's just usually nice to compare to the ground level. Alright, so finally, um, we can talk about the number of necklaces. So um, we have nice probabilities, we have um, probability ratios now. Well, what happens if you wanted to actually turn it into an actual number? So let's say if there were 10,000 necklaces, how would you convert a probability into an actual number of necklaces? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Our number of necklaces simply multiply it by the probability of whichever state you want it to be in. Uh, so if the probability was 0.9 um, for, for the first state, the sapphire sapphire necklace, uh, remember we didn't quite calculate it out here because it's, uh, it was kind of a lot of work, So, but if, with the Excel spreadsheet we actually have that actual number. Um, so I could look at that here. Uh, let's see. The probability of being in the uh, very first state was 18%. So the number of necklaces in state one, so our sapphire, 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 um, technically it's not, it's the configuration, so it's the $1,500 configuration. And the reason I can call it sapphire, sapphire, sapphire is because it had a degeneracy of one, so there's no other necklaces that are in that state. Um, but if it was one of the other states that had more than one, um, you wouldn't be able to refer to it just as that necklace. Um, it would have to be the configuration um, as a whole. So, <coughs> uh, so the number of necklaces in state one, our ground state, the $1,500 configuration, is going to be equal to 10,000 times 
18%. Um, and like I said, I got that number from our um, Excel spreadsheet. And the way you would have actually gotten that 18% um, is by doing the actual uh, full Boltzmann distribution there. You would have come out with P of 1500 equals 0.18. So that's how I got that number. And we end up with a total number of necklaces of about 1800. So, of the 10,000 necklaces, um, we can determine that there would be about 1,800 of them in the $1,500 state, um, which kind of makes sense. It's a, <coughs> it's a fairly high proportion of the necklaces, so it makes sense that um, because you're penalized for going up in energy, or up in cost in this case, that most um, would be in one of the lower states. Um, so I actually have a graph that shows the probability um, as it changes with cost. So I get the camera to kind of zoom in on it here. Um, so across the bottom it shows an increasing cost and it shows increasing probability on the side. So we can see that um, for our KT of 1,000, um, when we have you know, $1,000 available, um, there's a fairly high probability that the necklaces that we're going to find are going to be in some of the lower costs and it actually drops off pretty fast and the probability pretty much approaches zero once you get up into the um, really higher cost states. Um, so one kind of the last thing I want to finish up with um, is you can actually adjust the KT to get different probabilities. Um, so in this it's kind of like a money available kind of situation. Um, what if we said instead of a thousand that we use our KT, we use say um, ten thousand or two hundred dollars? So when we said you know, initially we that we had a thousand dollars available per week, um, and that pretty much restricted us, like we saw on the graph, the the probability dropped out pretty fast. So you'd be restricted to more of the the cheaper necklaces. Well, let's say you have. Um, $10,000 um, available for, per week. Um, so that's significantly more money. Um, so you'd think that maybe with more energy available, you'd be able to explore um, the higher cost necklaces without quite as much, um, without as much trouble. Um, so again, we have on our Excel graph of that. I have a graph of our probability for 10,000. And so this one, um, it actually has two kind of humps, and again, that's due to the degeneracy, some of the, de <coughs> the degeneracies for the higher states um, cause the probability to be higher for higher cost levels. But this one is definitely uh, more spread out. Um, there's quite a bit of probability even in the um, $9,000, $12,000 range. Um, so it kind of shows as you have more energy, um, the system is able, available to explore more and more, and more microstates. And then lastly, um, I have our graph of the $200 as our KT. So if there's not very much energy available, um, and this would be the same for a chemical if it was proportional to temperature, having a really low KT, we're going to have a really, really high probability of being in the cheapest or lowest energy state and it's going to drop off really fast um, all the way down to pretty much zero for all of the rest of the states. So almost all 10,000, if we said it and we had 10,000 necklaces, um, almost all of them would be the um, first configuration in that sapphire, sapphire, sapphire. And we'd have pretty much none in the, uh, be no, no likelihood for it being in the diamond, diamond, diamond. Um, so that's kind of a, a wrap-up of our statistical mechanics problem. Um, we kind of covered... Um, <coughs> oh, sorry, I was great. It's a good time to get sick right after the Christmas concert. Um, just to kind of wrap it up. <coughs> um, we talked about how to get all of our different um, possible combinations and how much they each would cost just by adding up the different costs for each one. Um, we talked about how to figure out um, microstates and configurations. <coughs> and after that, um, we went to Boltzmann distribution, finding out the probability of each state. Um, 
you know, normally using the energy in the KT for um, you know, chemicals and stuff, but in our case we had to use <coughs> cost and our uh, salary available. <coughs> we showed that we could have a probability ratio, um, which would eliminate the denominators and give us a nice um, easy way to calculate um, between the two states uh, how many there would be in one state versus another state. And then if you did have an actual probability, you could apply it to an actual number and be able to solve an exact number that would be in a certain state. Um, so I guess that's kind of my wrap up on statistical mechanics. I hope that helped and uh, good luck on your exams for the, the future of PCAP.